Hi, South Naz. It's great to be with you on this beautiful Wednesday. A couple months ago, I was taking a class, and in this class, I had to take the Strength Finders test. And part of that test is to help you better understand yourself um, as a leader and what your um, strengths are. Well, one of my strengths that came up was context. Now, I had never heard of that strength before. And how that theme is described is it's someone that enjoys thinking about the past. You understand the present by researching its history. Well, I always knew that I loved history and that I do look at things that are currently happening through the context or lens of history, but I never knew that that was a strength. Well, that's where this midweek moment is coming from. On last Thursday, which was September 17th, 233 years ago, after working for almost four months, 55 representatives that were a part of the Constitutional Convention completed the draft of and signed the U.S. Constitution. This was followed by more than two and a half years of work and compromise until the final 13th original colony, which was Rhode Island, ratified the U.S. Constitution and officially joined the United States of America. This reminds me how people do not always see eye to eye. And sometimes it does take time for us to come together and agree on something. But the hard work and effort of those colonists that spanned more than two and a half years was well worth the freedoms that we have in America. Now it's easy to look at our current climate and get discouraged. There is a lot of people disagreeing about how to handle situations that are going on in our world. But I remember that it's not the first time that we of a nation have gone through something like this, and it's definitely not gonna be the last. Just like it took our country's first leaders over two and a half years to all agree on our constitution, it takes time for us today to all come together and agree on things. Now, one thing that I love about living in America are the freedoms we have. In the First Amendment alone of the U.S. Constitution, we are given the freedoms of speech, press, religion, and assembly. The thing about these freedoms is that if I want them for myself, I have to be willing to let others have them too. And that's where it can get kind of messy. We want our freedoms, so others deserve their freedoms. But where do we draw the line? Where do we stand up for what we feel is right? This reminded me of a Bible verse found in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Paul is telling the church in Corinth, I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, to live in harmony with each other. Let there be no divisions in the church. Rather, be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. Now, this is no easy task. Even as Christians, we're not always going to agree on things, but God is telling us through the words of Paul that he wants his bride, the church, that's us, to not be divided, but to live in harmony, to be united in mind, thought, and purpose. Now, when we take this verse to heart and desire to live this way with our fellow Christ follower, God will be glorified and known. Despite the tension that's going on in our country today, my prayer is that those who do not know Jesus will see him through our testimonies as we live out 1 Corinthians 1.10, as we live in harmony with our fellow believer, not divided, but with one mind, united in thought and purpose. And because of that, those that don't know Jesus as their savior, they'll want to, and they'll ask him into their hearts. I encourage you this week to spend some time reflecting on 1 Corinthians 1.10. Ask God where it is um, in your life that you need to be more um, united with your fellow brother or sister in Christ. And let's pray for our church too, that as South Church of the Nazarene and the global church, that we are united together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful for your word today. I'm so thankful for the wisdom that it gives us and for just the tidbits of knowledge that we can take from it. And this verse found in 1 Corinthians 1.10 is one of those verses that I'm just really thankful for today. And Lord, I pray for myself personally that I am living in harmony with my fellow brother and sister in Christ and that I am united with them and, and that I am one mind with them. And Lord, I pray that for 
South Church of the Nazarene God um, as we move forward into um, kind of an unknown um, future God. May we stay united as a body of believers. May we stay in harmony with one another as we just walk the path that you have for us. May we be one in mind and in thought and in purpose, Lord. And may we continue to reach out to the lost around us. And may the way we live and the way we interact with each other, Lord, be a testimony to this community and to the people around us. And may they want what we have May they want to accept you as their savior too, Jesus. I'm so thankful for your goodness and for your mercy and for forgiving us. And I just praise you, Jesus. Amen.